Well guys, I went back to Pandora, and man was it good to be back. This is why you shouldn't doubt James Cameron, and I am so happy to be sitting here telling you that Avatar The Way of Water is actually pretty great. It has been 13 years since so many of us saw the beautiful world of Pandora on the big screen for the first time, and I remember being completely mesmerized by Avatar back in 2009. It was unlike anything I've seen before, it was an unforgettable experience, and as I was going into my rewatch of it before seeing the long-awaited sequel, I was worried I would be disappointed. To my surprise, I wasn't. The original has aged impressively well, and although the clunky dialogue is still there, the visuals are still fantastic, and the movie's big emotional moments still win you over. So with all of that in mind, my two biggest concerns going into The Way of Water were that the story was going to feel bland and transitional as we have three more Avatar sequels coming, and that there was no way it was going to make me feel the way I did seeing Pandora for the first time. I was wrong on both accounts. Once again, this is why you shouldn't doubt James Cameron, because he knows what he's doing and he absolutely delivered. I'm now realizing that this is the third big sequel I've praised this year. What is going on? Who am I even? The Way of Water is set over a decade after the events of Avatar. Jake Sully and Neytiri are now loving parents with a big family, but trouble arrives once again, so they make the decision to leave their home and start a new life with a new clan away from the forest in hopes of keeping each other safe. As you can imagine, conflicts escalate and this story eventually gets big and dramatic in a very Cameron way. I will get back to the story and the characters in a little bit, but first we have to talk about the visuals because exploring a new side of Pandora, expanding that world is what's so exciting about this film. It looks astonishing and I can once again say that the world of Avatar Avatar is unlike anything I've ever seen. This time it's the underwater world and its creatures that stand out the most, but really the entire film looks fantastic. And yes, the underwater scenes were actually filmed underwater. Everything from the creative designs and overall look of the environment to small details and textures, things like skin, hair, different surfaces, and the way the lighting interacts with all of that it all just looks real, even in close-ups. There were definitely moments when I was completely distracted from the dialogue by the visuals, just staring at some plants or the details on a sea creature. I know I missed some things that were being said a few times because of that. I even had to remind myself at one point that I'm indeed a human at a movie theater and that what I'm seeing is actually VFX and not real, which just tells you the remarkable level of immersion they were able to achieve here. It works in the smaller, more personal moments, and it works in the bigger moments when you can also see echoes of Cameron's previous works like The Abyss and Titanic. Honestly, saying this movie looks great just doesn't do it justice, and it really does have to be seen on the big screen. Now listen, I hate 3D. The experience always feels like a gimmick to me, I always get a headache afterwards, and I'm just not into wearing those used glasses. I hate 3D so much that the last time I saw a movie in 3D was The Walk in 2015. But James Cameron has earned the status of the only person who makes 3D worth it and who actually uses it well. I'll tell you this, when I walked into my screening and I was handed 3D glasses, I was thinking, Oh no, I have to do this for over three hours? But I am so glad that I got to experience the film this way. I saw it in Dolby 3D and that is the way to experience it. Do not let your dislike for 3D dissuade you from seeing Avatar The Way of Water because I know there are many of you out there just like me who are just not into this type of experience. As an adamant 3D hater, I am telling you, see this film in 3D on the biggest screen possible, with the best sound possible, as James Cameron intended. But the visuals alone wouldn't be enough to make this film worth over three hours of your time, and it is worth your time. 
you have to have a story that lands and you have to be invested in what's going to happen to the characters. The smart thing that this movie does is that it's no longer just about Jake's journey. It's about the family and it's also about all of them learning to live with a new clan. Jake and Neytiri almost feel like supporting characters here because there are long stretches of the film focused on their kids. We also have Kiri, who is Grace's daughter and who sometimes feels like she's being set up to eventually be the new lead of this franchise. We have a group of kids from the new clan who play an important role. Then there's Spider, who is a human son of Colonel Quaritch, and he has his own conflicting journey in this film. I obviously don't want to tell you too much, but with this family at the core of the story, the film really finds its emotional center. You still have those big themes of belonging somewhere, of protecting what's important and living in harmony with nature that are familiar from the first movie, but now this isn't just about one character's journey of discovering these things. The film belongs to the next generation just as much, if not more than it does to Jake and Neytiri. It did surprise me though how many plot elements from the first movie are recycled here and I wish that wasn't the case. Even though there is no longer an overarching romance, the fish out of water scenario is back, the threat is very familiar, and so is the villain. But there are also interesting new character dynamics and conflicts that arise, some of which are resolved in this film, and some are setting up tension for the third movie, which was actually filmed simultaneously with this one. I'm already looking forward to where this journey is going to lead next. Something that really makes both of these Avatar movies work is how sincere they feel. I said this about Top Gun Maverick earlier this year, and I will say it again about Avatar The Way of Water. It embraces the genre, it's not ashamed of itself, and the big epic scenes work because you can tell how much heart is behind all of that. Look, the writing itself is not the strongest thing about this film, and the dialogue in particular is occasionally very questionable. It's not as awkward as it was in the first movie, but still, let's be honest, Avatar The Way of Water is not getting any screenplay awards. It's that sincerity that so many modern blockbusters lack that makes the emotional beats land and makes us care about the things Cameron wants us to care about. He is once again working with broad themes and very high stakes but what we see on screen never feels like empty set pieces or uninspired plot devices because we spend time really observing this family, connecting with them and seeing how they interact with the world around them and with each other. Despite its flaws, the movie just works. Does it need to be three hours long? Not really. There are definitely sequences that could have been shorter, particularly in the second act where we spend a lot of time bonding with the ocean and swimming with the whales. It is the case of James Cameron really indulging in what he's able to do with these visuals, but also it is him taking his time to show his love for the ocean and I can't really be mad at that. Narratively, it slows the movie down and it might make you wonder why these scenes take as long as they do because the whale thing is pretty much an entire subplot, but visually and emotionally, it just gives you the opportunity to really take it all in. And in the end, all of that runtime, the movie spends building a connection between the audience, the characters in the world of Pandora, really pays off. The third act is where it all truly comes together. It's where the big action scenes happen, and they're not just there to be a spectacle. The outcome of what happens matters. Avatar The Way of Water is the imaginative quality blockbuster I actually want to see. It's a high stakes film that's truly epic in scope and scale, set in a well-developed world, but it also has a big Art. You may be coming to see it primarily for the otherworldly visuals and the groundbreaking effects, but it will also have an emotional impact on you. I was not expecting to enjoy this film as much as I did. It really surprised me in more ways than one, not the least of which is how invested I was in the actual story by the end of the movie. And I still cannot believe Avatar The Way of Water was able to make me feel the way I did 
seeing Pandora for the first time. James Cameron, how do you do this? But also, thank you for this adventure. I will be there for the next one.